Alright guys, welcome back. It uh, it almost happened. We almost got left for dead up in the mountains. Um, on our last adventure in the Can-Am, uh, Stator died, or the voltage regulator. I'm not really sure which. Basically, I ended up getting a warning across the dash that basically said uh, low battery voltage. Um, considering the battery is only, I don't know, as far as runtime goes, 10 hours old on the trickle charger all the time and stuff like that like the battery is new so that's not the problem um, but apparently once the uh, charging system goes out voltage on an x3 drops rather quickly and uh, it will still run at 11.1 volts just so you know tested um, yeah quite scary when uh, what we're up in the cascades and apparently they're releasing grizzly bears out there now so I was uh, I was pretty motivated to get the hell out of there and get back to the truck so um, right when I saw that, you know, we were already headed back, luckily. Um, but got it back here in the shop. I did all kinds of testing. You know, there's all kinds of stator tests and voltage regulator tests, you know, online. And um, sometime throughout my testing, it did, in my opinion, the worst thing it could do, which is it magically fixed itself, which we all know it didn't really fix itself. It's just fixed for now until it really screws you out in the middle of freaking nowhere, you know, out of bump Egypt. So we're gonna actually fix it. So ordered a, uh, from Evo, ordered a 850 watt upgraded stator and voltage regulator and all the, you know, gaskets and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. But because of all the Baja Designs lights we run and all the electronics, you know, and all the, like, the extra fan and everything else we run on this thing, really wanted to just do it once, do it right. Um, you know, trying to get ready for our race, what, in two more weeks. So, paid for two days shipping on it. So, we are going to tear it apart. Now, first thing that we need to do is the stator, or magneto as it's sometimes called, is right underneath here. Which means it's behind all these hoses and everything else. So, I already took off this outside cover plate. It is right there. And basically, there are two 30 our T30 Torx screws that hold it on right there. So take those off and then you'll be caught up to me. So the next thing we need to do is we need to drain the oil and drain the coolant. Um, really, honestly, not super stoked to have to do that, but because we have to take the oil cooler off, well, in my case, the oil cooler block off plate, because we have to take that off, that off and we have to get behind the water pump, we have to drain both of those fluids. So I, I'm gonna get on that. You don't need to watch me do that. And um, yeah, we'll be back in a second. What's going on guys? All right, now we're back in it. Got the coolant draining, drained, kind of done, pseudo. So just popped off that lower radiator hose right there and have the oil draining. So the next thing that you're gonna do, figure I can video this while I'm waiting is you're going to take off this plastic cover. So normally you'll have a whole pile of zip ties. Like I think there's two zip ties per hose um, here. And you'll also have a couple more hoses than what I have. Um, if you guys don't remember in a previous video, I relocated those two hoses right down there um, that were running up here. So cut all the zip ties. And then after that, you're going to remove the two bolts. You can see one right there and one right there. I believe they are either a 10 mil or a 12. Um, so you're gonna remove those. Then you can kind of finagle this piece of plastic out. Um, basically, you know, you kind of gotta pop the hoses out of here a little bit. Um, kind of. All right, so just kind of pop all the hoses out and then you should be able to wiggle this plastic piece out. If needed, you can take off the radiator, these two hoses right here, radiator hoses. Um, you can take them off from, you know, going in and out of the water pump. Um, you know, that'll make life a little bit easier and stuff. And then that way you can get this plastic piece out. Um, Cause actually these are gonna have to come off anyway. So take those off, take this off, get it out. And then I'm gonna do that. And then I will get right back with you guys. Now <clears throat> there are three tools that you need for this job. Apparently a uh, flywheel puller, a um, like basically like, it sounds like a barring tool to essentially keep the engine from turning over and this one, what do they call it, crankshaft protector. I think that's for when you're trying to pull the um, flywheel off, basically, that it will protect, you know, 
from the press like shoving in the flywheel. So I ordered those. Those are not going to be here for a couple days. So I'm not going to do all this stuff yet, um, just because I don't like having an engine open. You know, as I try to keep it as closed up as possible for you know as long as possible. I thought parts were going to be here. So since I paid for two day shipping, so unfortunately I did not read all the directions. So yeah, but we're going to get back after it once parts arrive. So stay tuned. A few moments later. Finally got our tools in. So I will put a link in the description below, but this is basically to uh, keep the crank from spinning. We're going to pull the starter out, wedge this little guy in there. And then in here is a uh, flywheel puller. Um, so hopefully these work, assuming they work well, like the Motion Pro one definitely should work well. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. This one, um, as you can tell, it's going to be hit or miss if it works well, but it should work okay. So now I'm going to pull the battery. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that on here because it is nothing like the stock setup because I had to fabricate everything. Um, and in doing so, I made a giant pain in the butt to, re to remove. So I'm going to pull the battery. Then after that, I'm going to pull the water pump housing. And then I'm gonna pull the oil cooler, right? Well, in my case, oil cooler block off plate. In your case, oil cooler. Um, after that, we will get back into it and stuff um, and we'll get closer to pulling this cover off. So, all right, I'm gonna get after it. All right, party's raging on. Two little pro tips for you. So, pro tip number one. Anytime you're taking hoses off or lines off, like the radiator hose down there, stuff to shop towel in it. Well, you know, the blue paper towels, right? This is my oil cooler line, both of them. You can see the other one right there. You know, wrapped them up. Well, I let them drain first and then wrapped them up with a shop towel, threw a Ziploc baggie over it and then just zip tied it. That way, that's not leaking all over everywhere. Same thing up there. The other thing is, you know how I like to mark all of my fasteners, right? I mark them all. That way I know if anything's moved. Well, that's good and bad. The downside is to that is whenever you take something off that has a lot of fasteners in it, um, you know, you take them all out, you throw them all in a tray, then you go put it back together, right? You throw your fasteners back in there in whatever order and you tighten them all down, the lines never line back up. So pro tip is keep all the fasteners in the correct hole, right? Like don't mix and match, right? Um, you know, makes life a lot easier. That way when you go to retorque it and stuff, all of your lines should and most likely will line right back up. Um, if not perfectly, they'll be super close. Uh, all right, I'm gonna get back after it and stuff, but I just thought about that and I figured I'd tell you guys. So, party's raging on. We're gonna get there. One of these days, we're not gonna have to work on this thing anymore. Probably not, but it's worth a shot. The oil cooler off and the water pump cover, those were all eight millimeters. This right here, is your uh, oil pressure regulator. That's a Torx T45. Then the uh, Magneto pickup, which goes right down here. Um, I already tucked it up out of the way and stuff. That's just an eight millimeter bolt that holds that in. And then it's just an O-ring that seals it. So just kind of give it, you know, pull it and give it a little bit of a wiggle and jiggle. It'll come out. Now I got the battery out and stuff. So this oil pressure regulator right there, so you're gonna need a small magnet. Um, I just used a, a pen magnet. I just used this little guy. So in there, you're gonna have the main plug, right? Which is, I said, you know, T45. And then the spring will be easy to get to. Then this little plunger, this is like stuck all the way down in there, like flat face first into the engine. So that's what you'll need the magnet to pull out. All right, so keep all that stuff together. Then after that, you got 14 fasteners on this cover to take off. You can see them all highlighted in red. So I'm gonna take that thing off and uh, yeah. Oh, I had to take the driver's side seat out too. Um, my magneto wire goes over there to my kill switch because you know need that for racing, it has to kill the engine. So I'm gonna get that cover off and then we're gonna explore and see what's under there. One thing that I just found out. So this is that cover that I was just trying to get off, right? Looks like that. There's a clip right here on this CDI wire. Well, I guess this would be the magneto wire. But anyway, 
this is clipped onto something. And when you try to take this cover off without unclipping that, it doesn't go. And then the other thing is, is uh, be sure to, you know, unplug it from the voltage regulator. Because again, if you try to leave those connected and take it off, shocker, it doesn't come off. So do that. Um, the other thing is, is when you're trying to take it off, got to wiggle and jiggle a lot. Um, it's definitely a snug fit in here. Um, I kind of tucked this hose down under it and then this hose, we came out and went straight down under it. And then the magnetic pull that happens, you know, is pretty substantial. So there's a big magnetic pull happening. So um, grab it by like the oil filter canister and then, you know, down there in that bottom corner, just kind of just rock it and just wiggle it. She'll come out. Got the crank stopper thing in there. And then pulled off the magneto the basket so it was a 14 millimeter allen that turned it and it was definitely helpful to have somebody slowly twist that while somebody else looks through that tiny little hole and waits for the you know little gap in the crank and stuff so you can thread that little stopper thingy in there um so then through the motion pro puller on there which works super good so i'll leave a link in the description below for that um and popped it right off so two things, that bolt that held that on, it is a big M16 bolt and it is torqued down like 140-ish foot pounds. Um, so yeah, be prepared to really give it a good reefing. But then as far as the puller goes to pop this thing off of here, um, that really didn't take too much effort at all and stuff, um, especially compared to that bolt. So I am officially dead in the water until I get parts. So. UPS is supposed to be here at some point. Um, you know, I uh, paid for two day shipping from Evo. They apparently shipped it out two days, three days after I ordered it and then gave me two day shipping. So this thing should have already been done and together. Um, but what do you do? So, all right, let's pray the UPS gets here. All right, parts finally all arrived. And I got the crank. You need to clean out the inside of the crank. So I just used a air hose blow gun, stuck it in there and stuff so it would blow everything back out. Um, and then also, you know, ran a th thread chaser through the threads, cleaned off the outer taper with some brake clean. And then also you need to make sure that this oil passage right here is nice and clean. Um, and then you can pick whenever I'm gonna wait but you need to also clean off this whole gasket mating surface as well. So I'm gonna do that here in a little bit. But the other thing we need to do before we stick in, I don't know, this has been called so many different things. So I guess before you stick in, you know, this rotor is you need to actually pull off this flywheel gear, which is a 10 millimeter. Um, and in order for it to fit down inside that little recess cavity, I'm gonna be using a quarter drive. So, um, you know, pull those three out, clean them off, lock tight them, you know, and then bolt it onto the new rotor. And then also the other thing we're gonna have to do is take out these three bolts from the old stator, pull it out, obviously take the gasket and stuff like that off, and then we'll throw in our new one. And then same thing with these bolts, you're gonna to wanna, to, you know, run them through a thread chaser and then also you know, relock tight and retorque those. And then that way this whole thing should be ready to go on as well. Remember how we did not take the spark plugs out? So far everything's going back together and I don't know why they tell you to take the spark plugs out, but I'll definitely let you know if we should have done that or not. Um, also, I don't know why we took the starter out either. So, I don't know. Anyway, got the uh, flywheel and the rotor installed and stuff. Um, I t started to torque these bolts, I threw some red Loctite on them and stuff after I cleaned them up really good. I started, started to torque them down to 30. On my way to 30, I thought these are gonna go from righty tidy to righty loosey. So I relooked at the spec sheet and I'm guessing these are not 12.9s, they're 10.9 like grade bolts. So I just ended up putting them at 25 and called it good. So next thing, this uh, big M16 bolt that goes right here in the center, you're gonna throw, you know, clean up the threads on it, throw some blue Loctite on there. Um, also, before you, like when you're putting this, you know, rotor on there, don't forget to put the starter, you know, starter gear on there. Like I said, 
I don't know why we took the starter out so far. I think you could get that uh, crank lock bolt in there without taking the starter out. Um, I don't even really think it like inhibits your space at all. And getting this gear in there with the starter in there, I don't think would be that bad either. So I don't know. remember how I said I wasn't sure why I had to take the starter out. Turns out I didn't have to. Um, and turns out in the directions it never told me to. So the only thing I can think of is uh, my dumbass read stator as starter. Uh, don't know how that happened. So if you already took the starter out, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to edit that part out, but if I forget, I am very sorry. Luckily, it's fairly easy. So I already put the starter back in. Um, now this whole side cover that took me two attempts. So lessons learned. One. When you put the uh, wiring harness in there, um, heat it up, like heat the wires up a little bit, just so that they will kind of flex down and bend down like this a little bit. It helps a ton. Basically, I set it, you know, on the bench, kind of just how it was, and then I let this wiring just kind of drape off the edge of the workbench, you know, while I heated up the yellow part of the wires, instead of just to kind of get it to slop down a little bit. You know, lesson number two. Um, when you put this in here, do it, like put the gasket on and stuff. There's two locating pins that will hold the gasket. Then get this cover kind of in here a little bit, then put your Permatex, you know, or your Loctite, you know, silicone basically around this top gasket thingy. Um, you'll see what I mean when you take apart your stock one, you'll see that up here where this grommet goes in, um, there's a little bit of Permatex. So I got this thing in basically just like this, except for I rested the bottom of it down here on the frame rail. Um, I was able to then, you know, put the silicone around it and stuff like that and get it all gooped up. Um, and it made it way easier because first time I tried to put it in here, like I did gooped it all up on the workbench and then I tried to put it in here, nightmare, don't do that. Um, next lesson is, or next I guess thing that I did is I torqued everything down at 50 inch pounds and then I did a finish pass at 80 inch pounds so hopefully it doesn't leak basically i tried to i couldn't find a pattern as to like how you're supposed to torque it down um so i just did it like a like i would do like a cylinder head uh basically i kind of spiraled out um did that at 50 inch pounds you know went around it a couple times just to make sure everything was you know at 50 and then i hit it all at 80. so next i'm gonna do the well you already saw that i got the oil block off plate thing for you guys it'll be an oil cooler um, now I'm gonna do the water pump and cool thing is is gave me a new gasket for the water pump cover then after that I think we're doing the voltage regulator so I'm gonna get the uh, water pump cover on then I'm gonna also get that uh, oil pressure regulator installed in there then after that I will show you guys how we're gonna do the voltage regulator so here we go water pump covers on the uh, oil pressure regulator that is 155 inch pounds not foot pounds inch pounds um, it's not called out in the direction so I had to look it up so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, you're gonna take off the two bolts that are right here um, I believe they were 10 millimeters and then the stock voltage regulator should come right out Now, the next thing it says that we're gonna have to do, um, I'll work on getting that out off camera just so I don't waste your guys' time. Next thing we gotta do is we're gonna have to drill new holes because this bracket, the spacing of these two fasteners is a little bit wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this thing up in there and you know kind of hold it in place. Then I'm just gonna, you know, probably use like a punch or something like that just to like mark where the two holes need to be drilled um, and then I'll drill my two holes then I'll uh, come back and we will get those two things installed so my god this is a little bit more of an undertaking than I kind of thought it would be um, just used to working on you know dirt bikes and stuff like that so I kind of knew roughly you know how long it should like how long it should take to replace the stator and stuff and uh, currently on these it's a little harder um, had this shit shipped out when it was supposed to because I planned for this to happen this wouldn't be an issue 
but Murphy's Law. So, kind of have a feeling not going to be going testing tomorrow. <clears throat> so, already missed testing today and Saturday. Now, tomorrow, I've got a hunch it's not going to happen. So, but anyway. Um, new voltage regulator is in. Turns out didn't have to drill any holes. Uh, there were already two holes there that were the correct spacing. Um, they were just like a fuzz too narrow, but I actually left them alone because I was able to shove that little bracket thing through. Um, and actually, because it's kind of an interference fit, when you go to thread the nuts on there, it doesn't just like push back out. Now, one thing I kind of wish I would have known, but I don't think it really would change anything. Um, this connector that did go to the old voltage regulator, um, it has your positive and negative on it that run up to the uh, battery and starter solenoid. Um, this is part of another harness, so this will stay in here for eternity. Um, if you want, you can cut it out. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna tape it up really good, and then I'm just gonna tape it down here. I think this is fuel line right there and breather hose. Um, so I'm just gonna tape it down there. Um, you know, it's already disconnected from the other end and stuff, so yeah, that'll go there. Now, I, uh, what? The way this voltage regulator goes in, comes in, or you know, installs like that, right? The wire loops around like that, goes back down over to the center console, and then goes whoop right up through the center. Then the next thing we gotta do is this connector right here, which will plug in to this connector that comes from the stator. Um, you're supposed to put like a little, they give you a little bracket thing that you end up screwing up here. You guys will be able to do that, but I won't because, you know, I have, excuse me, my battery extended terminals up there. So I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put it yet, um, just for the sake of trying to hurry up so that I have some chance of getting out and testing tomorrow. I might just wait and just zip tie it for now. Um, but yeah, so now on the inside, basically, so, because I have the battery cutoff switch, here's the other end of the wires. Because I have the battery cutoff switch, I'll be doing mine a little bit different. But otherwise, you guys will be taking, you know, the black wire will be going to your negative, and then this red wire will be going back to your starter solenoid. Um, you know, basically where you take the other wire off for the, you know, existing wiring harness. You'll take that one off, just do a continuity check, you know, basically continuity from the red wire on that pigtail I showed you and then just check, you know, just take off the wires from your starter solenoid and just check each one. I think there should be three. Just check each one, whichever one has continuity, just leave that one off. And then you put this red wire on in its place. So mine, like I said, because race car, it has to go to the battery cutoff switch, so. Holy cow, I think I might actually finish this thing today. So, got the, uh, you know, wires all hooked up. You know, I grounded it out right there to the, um, that bus bar, mainly because I have a large wire that goes straight from the bus bar over to the ground on the battery. And then my positive wire goes to the other side of the kill switch. Um, starter is in, Loctited, that, you know, funky bolt for locking out the crank. That's in and Loctited. Back here, I got the wiring kind of ran somewhat, at least for now. I don't totally like it, but, um, through my new oil filter in there and stuff because got to do an oil change during this got that back shell piece on to support the radiator hoses and got all the radiator hoses connected up i got my oil lines torqued down and stuff got the uh, magneto pickup you know back on that gets torqued to 80 inch pounds um so we're uh, we're cruising right along through the drain bolts back in it i got the got oil put back in it and stuff um, so now I just need to throw my battery back in it and then dare I say at that point I can start it and start to burp the coolant out of it so hopefully you guys uh, don't run into some of the same issues that I did stuff just as far as like not knowing exactly how to do this whole thing um, but I would say realistically if I were like if I had a video like this that I could have watched before I started this whole thing I still would have give myself like full Saturday all the way through Sunday as well 
Um, I started this whole thing Monday this week. I started tearing stuff apart. Um, so I would definitely allow myself 48 continuous hours to be able to work on this. Um, will it take, you know, the full two days? Probably not. But if you don't allow yourself to have all that time, you know, Murphy's Law. So if you give yourself like, you know, two full days to do it and stuff, like watch this video beforehand. And then honestly, I don't think it'll be any big deal and stuff. You won't be stressed out, out, you know, out at all. Then Sunday can uh, kick back and have some beers in the afternoon and stuff because you'll probably be done. So hopefully this helps you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish this thing up. And God willing, we get to go do some suspension testing tomorrow. Thank God. So, all right, see you guys later.